Hey everyone, thanks for coming to my channel. My name is Chris and in this video I wanted to talk about my experience using the iPad Pro with Magic Keyboard for the past three or so months. So it's taken me a little bit longer than usual to make this video and really there's quite a few things that I wanted to do with this product. Um, first, I created a video with my first impressions. I'll leave it up here for you so you can check that out. Um, I also wanted to compare the Magic Keyboard with the Smart Folio case. Uh, but whenever I started working on that video, um, a lot of other creators were creating the same type of video. And if you go to YouTube and you search for Magic Keyboard versus Smart Folio, they all look the same. The thumbnails are the same, the uh, content is more or less the same. It's good quality content, but they all cover the same thing. Here are the spec differences between the two. This is what you get with one versus the other. I didn't want to spend a lot of time creating something that's already been created by uh, other creators. So what I wanted to do instead is show you something that only I can show you. And that's my experience as a consultant, business professional, uh, using my iPad for the majority of the stuff that I do. Um, so with that said, that's what this video is going to be about. I'm gonna show you my experiences with it, um, what I do on the iPad, instances where I have to put the iPad aside and actually do something on the computer. And I'll still throw in some comparisons to the Folio keyboard, just because even before the Magic Keyboard came out, I used my iPad Pro with my Smart Folio keyboard um, a lot for it. So, first thing I want to do is just give you a little bit of background about what I do and uh, how I would incorporate the iPad into my setup. Um, I'll talk about some of the pros, some of the cons. I'll talk about whether or not it's worth it to spend the extra money on the Magic Keyboard as opposed to something like the Smart Folio or just a completely different Bluetooth keyboard. And then I'll just give you an overall, what my experience is, do I regret this purchase, and how does it fit into my work and personal productivity setup. So let's get right into it. So during the workday, I use my iPad for chats, for responding to emails, for joining video conferencing calls, um, for updating Word documents. A lot of these tasks that consist of either typing or communicating with people on my team. So that's the first use case for it. The second use case is for uh, writing. So a lot of the scripts that I write, um, a lot of my work, my Notion uh, workspaces, I mostly edit off of this. My blog posts are all written on this. Um, so for me, a keyboard is really important to make all of these updates or complete all of these tasks in a way that's efficient and doesn't necessarily require me to be at a computer like I am right now. I also use this to edit photos. So because I have that USB-C slot, I'm able to plug in a USB-C to SD card adapter, import photos into Lightroom, and make edits that way. So these are photos that I either share with friends and family, they end up on Instagram, or they could end up being the thumbnail for some of my videos. So I use it that way as well, and really for a lot of like brainstorming, jotting down notes, things like that. Uh, there's other use cases, like other ways I use the iPad uh, that don't require a keyboard, like reading or just browsing the web. And I'll talk about how the Magic Keyboard really doesn't make an impact there, but it actually makes it a little bit harder to use as a tablet, so I'll get to that point later on. So now that we answered the question, how I use my iPad, let me give you my thoughts on how the Magic Keyboard fits into my workflow. So the first thing is typing. I do a lot of typing throughout the day. If I'm having conversations on chat or through email, I like to do that on the iPad just because there's fewer distractions, there's less notifications because I silent all of my notifications on here. And if I really wanna focus and uh, write an email or uh, respond or have a conversation on chat, um, 
I usually go to my iPad for that. And because there's a lot of typing involved, the Magic Keyboard here has made a really big difference in just my typing speed, the quality of the typing experience, and the integration of the trackpad has actually made it easier to navigate uh, throughout the iPad. So if I have to switch from Gmail to chat, like I can do that with the trackpad. And uh, I find that ever since I got the Magic Keyboard, I haven't really needed to touch the iPad in order to get full use of it, uh, which I think has been really cool and something I didn't expect from the trackpad. So you might ask yourself, okay, the we know the keyboard is great, but the Smartfolio also had a decent keyboard. And yeah, it had a good keyboard, but it's just completely different. The Magic Keyboard, the way the keys are laid out, the the switches that they're using on this keyboard more so relate to the typing experiences that you might find on a Mac. Whereas on the Folio keyboard, it just felt like a really, really clicky, really, like it was really hard to tell if you pressed a key or not. And one of the comments that I got a lot whenever we were back in the office and I would be working there is that if I were typing on my smart folio keyboard, you could really hear it. So I'll put a just a brief comparison of what the typing sounds like um, so that you can get an idea in case how loud the keyboard sounds while you're typing. Um, if that's important to you, this might be useful. Magic Keyboard keys are also backlit, um, which is a pro and a con in my opinion. Backlit keys are one of those things that just differentiate a standard keyboard from a really high quality keyboard. Uh, but one of the things I noticed whenever I had my first unit of the Magic Keyboard is that the battery drain would just be super crazy. So I'm still seeing a little bit more of the battery drain. It's not as bad as it was on my prior unit, but since I do use my iPad for a big portion of the day, uh, just typing or joining calls on, on it, I understand why the battery would drain a lot faster. Um, but I was getting like maybe three hours, four hours of battery life from like nine and then by 11, 12 o'clock, I was already at 10, 5%. So that's the part that was concerning me that uh, prompted me to reach out to Apple to see what was up with that. But I'm not seeing that anymore. Um, and even then now, I have my iPad at my desk and I have a USB-C cable at the ready. So if I'm ever in need of a charge, I just go ahead and plug it in so I, don't, I can avoid that altogether. So some additional notes about the trackpad. It is a little bit smaller, but uh, just based on how much keyboard you're trying to fit on here, uh, the keyboard itself is a good size. So I understand why the trackpad is just a little bit narrower than what you would expect. Um, sometimes if I'm scrolling up or doing the four finger gesture up to go home. Uh, sometimes I just go off the trackpad and I end up hitting the home key, but I think that's just a little bit more on me and where I have to adapt to the size of the, of the trackpad. Um, otherwise, it's, it's really a lot better than what I was expecting from a trackpad on the iPad. Uh, whenever iOS 13.4 came out, uh, I made a video here about how um, that would just change the way people use their iPads. Uh, I had downloaded the beta and connected a mouse uh, to my iPad just to see what that would be like. And using a mouse is great, um, but just the, the trackpad just surprised me and I'm really happy with it. I like the gestures, it's smooth, it's premium, it's changed the way that I interact with my iPad. And like I mentioned earlier, I find myself using my iPad throughout the day without even having to touch the screen which is something I wouldn't have thought I would be doing two or three years ago. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Those are all things that like a lot of people rave about the iPad. Here's some things that I don't like or some things that have made it a little bit harder for me to use. The first off is the weight. And I know a lot of people talk about the weight. It's pretty obvious. I mean, you can just look at the specs and see how much it weighs. And uh, once you get it in the mail, like you pick up the box, you, you can tell how much it weighs. So. Yeah, it's a heavier product, uh, mostly because you have to offset the weight of the iPad since it's hanging. Uh, so you have to make the base a little bit heavier. Okay, makes sense. Um, but what this weight does is that it uh, just makes it a little bit harder to maneuver. 
Um, I have an iPad here in the regular smart folio case, and this is just super light. And if I want to open it, like I can just set it up relatively quickly. This, on the other hand, it's chunky. It has a nice weight to it, but if you want to set it up, it takes a little bit of work. And forget trying to open this with one hand. Like This is a two-hand job that you need to do. Uh, so it's just something that you have to get used to or something to consider. Uh, if, you're at the, if you're at a coffee shop or something and you're just going to take a seat or if you just want to take it out really quick to jot down some notes, um, you have to be intentional about taking it out, opening it up. It's not going to be quite as seamless as this. So the last thing I wanted to talk about now is the tablet ability of this case. So like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, a lot of the use cases for how I use my iPad Pro include uh, just browsing the web, either in landscape or portrait, uh, reading books on the Kindle app, or just interacting with different types of apps that don't require a keyboard. So things like my Sonos app, if I'm just uh, sitting on the couch controlling the music, um, if I'm using my iPad as my Apple TV remote, like I don't need the case. Um, and the thing about that is with the smart folio keyboard case, if I wanted to keep the case but not use the keyboard, I would just flip it back. So I could sit on the couch, yeah, the keys in the back are there, but still, I could still use my iPad as a tablet. I could do anything I wanted to do uh, on my iPad as a tablet with the case on. That's not the case, huh. that's not the case here. If I want to use my iPad as a tablet, you have to take it out of the keyboard case and use it like this. So one, you're not getting protection, but two, you're spending all this money on a premium keyboard case, um, but you're also losing the ability to use your iPad as a tablet. And that's where it starts to get kind of confusing for me. You're paying this much for an iPad keyboard case that makes your iPad a little bit more like a laptop. Not as good as a laptop, but just a little bit more as good. But it makes it a worse tablet. And like, is that worth $200, $250? Wait, no. Is that worth $300, $350 to get a slightly better typing experience? but you lose the ability to use it as an iPad? I, I don't know. It's really hard for me to justify that for most people. And that's why I open up the video asking you to ask yourself, how do you use your iPad? If you're somebody who uses the iPad, whether it be the regular iPad, the iPad Pro, in this case, we're just talking about the iPad Pro and Magic Keyboard. Are you a student who uh, types a lot of notes? and you really just want to have that experience to uh, click around on your iPad, type all of your notes, have a good typing experience, include the Apple Pencil. Um, it's a really expensive combination. You could definitely get a, a laptop that would include all of those experiences and maybe a cheaper, uh, the entry-level iPad with the Apple Pencil and get that writing experience. Um, but if you're just somebody who uses this for Netflix, uh, you read books on it, you don't really do a lot of creating or note taking or anything like that, I don't know that this is worth it for you. That's how I feel about this. Personally, I'm getting a lot of value out of this. It's uh, helping me get through uh, my work day. It's helping me, me be more productive. I can join calls easily. I don't have to worry about the audio, the mic, the camera settings on my laptop. I can just open a calendar invite, one tap, click, and I'm in the meeting. So I don't have to worry about that. I can use my AirPods with this. It's just a really seamless experience. It's whenever I take the iPad off the case to use it as an iPad that I think about whether or not I made the right choice to spend $300 on this case. And if that's something that you don't want to feel, then I would just skip this product. But if your iPad either generates money for you or helps you create something that generates money for you, uh, I don't think you'll have that regret. So in summary, these are my thoughts. 
This product is made for people who work first on their iPad. And if you really want to figure out if the Magic Keyboard is worth it for you, um, ask yourself how you use it and how your use of it might change if you were to get it. Um, if you have to change how you interact with the product way too much just to make the product fit, um, then it's probably not a good product for you to invest in. But if you want the best trackpad keyboard combo for the iPad Pro, this is it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching that video. I really appreciate your support. If you're not subscribed already, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Um, hit that notification bell so that you can get uh, notifications whenever I post new videos. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Um, is this a product that you would use or do you think it's just too much money for what you're getting out of it? I'm interested to see what you think about the iPad Pro, the Magic Keyboard down below. I'll see you in the next one.